Corporate finance practice problem using Excel. Dissident stockholder group cumulative voting multiple scenarios. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet and would like to follow along, note that we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab in essence being an answer key. Information on the left-hand side, we're going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. This will be a more complicated problem, but similar and using the concepts of cumulative voting. So if you want a more simplistic problem related to cumulative voting, take a look at one of our prior practice problems, practice problem number one, preferably. And then once you get the concept down, you can go here where we'll add a few more complications, including a dissident stockholder group and run a few different scenarios that uh, may take place or how you might use these kind of concepts in practice where you don't know exactly what's going to go on. You might have some variations uh, as you think about the cumulative voting structure and what other people might do within it and then how you might react to it. So we have the dissident stockholder group type of situation. Same kind of situation we are imagining here. We have a board of directors that are going to be up and uh, there's the voting shares on the board of directors. And we're trying to see if, uh, you know, what's going to happen if we maximize the uh, number of people we can get on the board of directors. Here we are in our Excel worksheet. If you have access to the Excel worksheet, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if we'd like to, we're in the practice tab as opposed to the example tab. The example tab, in essence, being an answer key. Information's on the left-hand side. We're going to populate that into the blue area on the right-hand side. We're going to be having a more complex scenario, but still using the cumulative voting type of system. So if you want a slower example and a more simplified example of that, take a look at problem one on uh, cumulative voting. Here, we're going to add a few more components to it, including a dissident stockholder group. And we'll go through a bit more complicated of a scenario and we'll run different type of scenarios in it, given the fact that obviously in real life, we don't know what exactly the other person is going to do, the other group is going to do. So we might then run different scenarios through our thought process to see how we would compile our votes. The basic scenario is the same. We're trying to think about what you know we as the voters you can think about the voters of the company then or the stockholders of the company they are going to influence the company through voting for the board of directors the board of directors then is going to represent the stockholders they're going to hire management such as the president and so on top management ceo and whatnot management then is going to run the firm so we're going to imagine a situation here where we have a dissident group of stockholders that are not happy, we're, we'll say, right? They're, they think that the management of the company is not doing well. They're not getting the return that they believe they should as the owners of the company. So what can they do? They can influence the company by voting for different representatives, similar to in a democracy, voting for different Congress people and whatnot. They can vote for different people and they can demand those people to take action, such as possibly replacing management to then... Uh, adjust make adjustments to get a better return possibly so uh, if you are then the president of a company we can imagine this from the perspective of the president you might be saying okay i'm top management of the company if you're top management of the company and you're saying i know the current board of directors likes me a lot and i'm feeling pretty secure with my job with them but uh, if the current board of directors are replaced then uh, then i could have a problem right the, the management could then be replaced at that point in time so we'll imagine a starting point where we have 13 board of directors and they're all up for re-election all 13 currently like the president and would keep the president in their job as the manager if the dissident group can pick up a majority of the board of director seats you would think that they would then have the ability to to replace the president at that point in time so that's that's the question so in other words if we're talking 13 board of directors then you would need seven of them to flip from being from being supportive of the current management to to being able to change them and then you know they would have the majority within the election with regards to the board of directors for the management and selecting management so we're going to imagine the dissident stockholders control proxies for for shares of 45,000 so the people that want to replace have shares of the 45,000 proxies basically means they can act as an agent to vote uh, the way they, they want to vote there. So they're going to be able to control, in essence, the 45,000 shares. The current president and associates currently on the board hold proxies for shares of 65,000. And then the stockholders whose position is not known is the 37,000. This last one, of course, is the component 
that we haven't really looked at in the past, right? We've, we've thought about the scenario, you know, what would happen if everybody was against us, that'd be the worst case scenario. But in, in practice, there's probably going to be a select selection of group that doesn't even vote at all or something like that or you don't know what they're going to vote for so there's probably going to be two core groups that you can at least guess at you know where you stand so we'll take a look at it from this position then we'll take a look at it from the second position here and then we'll make a change for, from it but obviously you would know where you stand you could probably have a good idea what the main what the big faction against you will stand but you don't know where a lot of other people might stand in, in terms of it and and uh, you might try to figure that out and whatnot and and think about what to do from there so let's first take take a look at this from the dissident stockholders uh position they control forty five thousand shares how many just based on that if everything else went against them then how many how many people could they put on the board a couple ways we can calculate this i'll do this a bit more quickly because we've seen this a few times here so i'm just going to copy this whole formula there's two formulas that are related you'll recall one is the share required and this formula would be equal to the number of directors uh, of directors needed times the total number of shares outstanding divided by the total number of directors to be elected uh, plus one, all of that plus one. That's a related formula to the number of directors that, that can be elected. The second one is what we're doing now. But remember, you don't really have to memorize two formulas per se if you, if you realize that they are related. So we'll do the calculation both ways. The first way with a goal seek. The second time we'll do this formula. Just so you understand those two formulas are related. If you need to memorize them, it will be easier to do so if you understand they're related. So we're going to use goal seek first with the first formula. And I'm going to just plug in the number of directors desired. I'm just going to say that's five. That's our starting point. We don't know what it is yet. So I'm just guessing at this point. Then we're going to and then we're going to use goal seek to back into that number. And then we're going to say the outstanding shares outstanding shares are totaling then this 147. Let's underline that by going to the font group and underline. That'll give us the numerator of five times 147. That's going to give us the, the uh, 735,000. Then we're going to take the total number of directors to be elected, which is going to be 13. And then we simply add one to that. Let's underline that font group and underline. That's going to be equal to the 13 plus one or the 14. Underlining that font group and underline, that's going to give us the denominator. We'll divide this out then. The 735,000 divided by 14 is going to be the 52.5. Then we add one to that. I'm just following this formula down here plus the one. So one to that. Actually, that one is over here this one that's the one one we're on and then i'm going to underline that underline that and then we'll add these up equals the sum the sum that's not the sum that's some function i don't know what it is sum of these two so there we have it now now what i'm going to do is back into this number i know what that that number needs to be or i'm I, what that number needs to be in order to get this number to be what i know it should be which is the 45,000. So I'm going to use goal seek to say, please change this cell to 45,000 by adjusting this cell. So let's do that. We're going to go to the data group up top. We're going to go to the what if analysis goal seek. I'm going to say, please change this cell to know what we know it should be 45,000 hard coding that 45,000 by then adjusting this cell up top and then OK. So there we have it. I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to go to the home tab. We're going to add a couple decimals. That's one way you could do this. Do this here. I'm going to add the decimals to this cell. You can also do the formula down below, which would be the more direct formula. This is the second formula, number of directors that can be elected. So I'll calculate that number of directors that can be elected. We're going to have the shares owned minus one. So I'm going to pick the shares owned here which is going to be this minus one. And then we have the directors to be elected plus one. So the next one is going to be the directors to be elected 13 plus one to give us that 14. I'm going to underline that. So we're going to go to the font group and underline. We'll multiply that out to give us the numerator. This is going to be the 44999 times 14. That'll give us the 69986. And then we got the shares outstanding. We'll pick up then the shares outstanding. 
which are going to be equal to the 147,000, underlining that font group and underline, that's going to give us the number of directors that can be elected. This equals the numerator divided by the denominator for adding a couple decimals number group, couple decimals. So same number we got to here and here. Now, if we think this through, let's run this through. That means that, uh, that based on just this 45,000, if we just have that, and we don't know what this group is going to do. That means that we can get four, we can pick up four, and that's not going to be enough for us to, to sway, but we still don't know what this group is going to do. But So this is kind of our starting point. So we'd say, all right, that means, let's just think about this. If we had the total outstanding shares, they add up to the 147,000. The total number of directors that are going to be voted on add up to 13. That means that the votes are going to be adding up to the 147,000 times the 13. I'm going to put an underline under the 13, home tab, font, and underline. The dissident, which is what we're focusing in on now, has 45,000 shares times 13 for the number of votes that are allocated to them, font group, underline. And then if we multiply that out, that means as the dissidents, we would have 585,000 votes. Taking the difference then, I'm going to call this the incumbent, incumbent meaning the, the, you know, the people that aren't trying to change the things, right? 147 minus the 45. Now, this is not quite fair because I'm assuming that both this 65 and that 37 adding up to the 102 will be against us. We don't know that. We only know the 65 is going to be against us, and we may not even know that, but we can probably get a pretty good guess there. We're not sure about this 37, but the first starting point is going to say, what if what if everything works out against us? What Where would we stand? So that, we're going to say times 13 again. And underline this font group and underline. We'll multiply this out. This is going to be the 102 times the 13. So if we take then that number and say, okay, this is kind of the worst case scenario for the, for the dissidents. We can pick up four. Let's just think that through why it would be. If I was to say one, two, there's going to be 13. I'm going to autofill this all the way down. 13 spaces. We just need to, we're going to prove here that we can fill four of them in our worst case scenario. We're going to say, all right, if, if we say these are all the names of the candidates, these top four will just imagine our hours just to run our scenario. We're going to take our votes, the 585 divided by four and lock up four seats with them lock up four seats so there we have it if everybody else worked against us including the people we know are going to work against us and the unknown group and they all tried to block us they wouldn't vote for these four at all and they would then try to vote for people that we don't want on there right so then they or the you know the current board they would be voting to keep the current board members that want the status quo so they can say, they could do this. They could try to say 146, 251 to try to beat us out on as many board members as they can. Like down to here. Now these slots aren't in contention, but they need all these people plus one more to beat all of our people in order to kick one off, right? So then they have, how many votes do they have left? They got the 1,000,000, minus the sum of these would mean that they don't have enough left to kick that last one off. So if I sum up in other the total work, the total votes, summing this up and adding that down, these are the total vote totals. We'll sum them up this way, total. This is going to be equal to sum of these items. I'm going to copy that across. We're going to control C left holding shift and then paste that off. So there's our totals here. So now let's let's take these. These are our four. I'm going to make them green. Those are the ones that uh, that we're going to lock down. Just prove it over here. Let's go ahead and sort these and see who the winners would be if this was the vote count. So I'm going to take this column, hold down control, take this column, copy it. I'm going to paste it over here so we can sort by the total column. Paste it one, two, three. These four are ours. Font group making them green. And then I'm going to sort by the total, Z to A. 
So that means we got these four in the top the top 13. So these four are still in the top 13. They couldn't beat us with this one. So that proves basically we can we can kind of lock down four if we were the uh, dis dissident group that wanted change to happen. So what if we were the other group? If you're thinking, okay, let's look at it from the perspective of the people that want to to keep the status quo. So we're going to keep the status quo group now, which is under here. They have 65,000 shares. Let's do the same thing. We'll say, all right, we'll do our calculation. How many votes could they control? We still don't know this, these guys down here, the 37. So if we consider worst case scenario for them, let's do this the two ways again, which I know is kind of tedious, but we'll do this two ways. We're going we're gonna to estimate this number, and then we'll back into it with goal seek first way. Outstanding shares are going to be the total uh, 147,000. And then we, we will then say that uh, that's going to be the numerator font group underline. Multiplying this out, this is going to be the five times the 147,000. Then we have the total number of directors to be elected, which is 13. Adding one to that font group and underline, that's going to give us, of course, the sum equals the SUM equals the SUM. That'll give us 14. We're going to go font group and underline. There's the denominator. We'll divide that out. Dividing the numerator by the denominator. And then we add one to it. And so I know I did that fairly quickly, but we've done it a few times here. So try to run that through fairly quick. There we have it. Now we know this N number needs to be the 65,000. I'm going to use goal seek to get that number to be 65 by changing this number to whatever it needs to be to get there. So I'm going to go then to the data tab, forecast, what if analysis, goal seek. We want to set this cell to be 65,000 by changing this cell. We'll say, okay, there we have it. We're going to add a couple decimals here, add a couple decimals. So we're at around six, right? So they can control six. We'd have to drop, drop, the, um, drop the added decimal numbers of the 19. So they control six, not quite enough because we, we need seven really to be sure that the president's not going to get fired, right? But we don't know what's going to happen to the 37 down here. Let's calculate that again. We can calculate that again using the second method. So we'll calculate that one more time. So we'll start with the shares owned minus one. We're looking at, we're looking at uh, the second calculation, which is up here, this method, shares owned minus one times the total number and so on. I'll do it a little bit more quickly though. So we got the shares owned minus one. So we're going to say that's going to be the 65,000 minus one. And then we've got the directors to be elected plus one, which is going to be equal to the 13 up here plus one. And that's going to give us, I'm going to underline font group and underline. That'll give us the numerator the numerator, which is going to be then equal to the 64,999 times 14 for the 909,986. And then we have the shares outstanding, which I'll pick up over here. Shares outstanding at, hold on a second, at the 147,000. Underlining that, font group and underline, that's going to give us the total number of directors that be can be elected this is going to be equal to the 909986 divided by the shares outstanding adding a couple decimals number add a couple decimals there's that 6.19 again which we'd have to round to six that we got to up top let's run the scenario from their perspective now these are the incumbent people so we're going to say now the shares outstanding shares outstanding we're still saying are the 147 total shares outstanding the the board of director members that are going to be elected let's call it the same thing let's pick it up from here so the names will be the same so we'll pick it up from there and then we'll have the votes so the shares or directors are going to be 13. let's underline that font group and underline multiply that out 147 times 13. Now on the incumbent side, so now we're looking at the incumbent on this column, 
they are going to control 65,000 shares times 13 font group and underline. That's going to be 65,000 times 13 or 845,000 votes. That means the dissonant is going to be 147 minus 65, which again isn't very isn't quite right because we only know they only have 45, but we don't know what's going to happen with this 37. We'll apply them out to the group that's against us. This time we're thinking of ourselves as the incumbent. That would be the 82,000. This is worst case scenario with regards to the incumbent side of things. So we're going to say that's going to be 13. Multiplying that out, we're going to say 82 times the 13. We got the total of the 1,066,000 that could potentially be against us if we're on the incumbent side. Worst case scenario for the incumbent. So let's do our same analysis. What would happen if this was the case? We're going to say 1 through 13. We'll have our same A through O candidates. And I'm going to imagine that these are the top, the top ones are going to be the incumbent side. Now, these, are, of course, aren't the same people that the incumbent and the other side want. But we're just imagining this to the scenario. So if I was doing this from the incumbent, I'm going to say the top six are the ones that we can pick up. We can pick up six candidates, whoever they are. And we're going to do that by taking the number of our votes, which is the 845, divided by, divided by 6, and just allocate our votes on down to those six candidates like so. Total down here, total equals the sum of these items. And then what would the other people do? Well, if they if they were working against us, and, and we know they're not all possibly working against us because there's a there's this portion that we don't know about, but if they all were, then we would assume that they're not going to do anything for these incumbents and they're going to try to vote on their own people. Those dissident people are going to try to vote on their own thing. So we're going to say then they could try to say 140834 to try to beat us out if they know our strategy all the way down to uh, here, but then they would need one more to, to beat out at least one of these six. And that do they have the votes? Well, they got 1,066,000 minus the sum of these items, closing up the tab. They don't say so they don't have enough to kind of beat that one out. So let's just prove it by summing this up this way. We'll sum this up this way. And we'll copy this across like that. And then we'll total this down this way. So let's equal the sum going across. These are our total votes per candidate. Per candidate. So there we have it. There's our totals again. Totals lining up like so. So now let's let's copy these over to our table to the right so that we can then... I'm holding down control and copying two non-adjacent columns. Control C. And then I'm going to paste them right here, paste them one, two, three, so that they're just numbers so that I can then sort them on the right without messing anything up. Before we do, though, let's make these green. So these are the ones that represent the, the, the ones we selected as the incumbent now, sorting from A, Z to A. So now the, they're on the bottom, but they're still in. They're still in the 13. This one's not high enough to kick out one of our six. That's why that strategy works. We got our six there. So from the incumbent side of things, they think they can pick up six for sure, which they should be able to. And on the dissidents, they got four for sure. But really, you need seven. You need seven <laughs> to be able to uh, take control. Because if you have seven, you would think the board of directors could then, you know, if the dissidents got control of seven board members out of 13, they would have a majority on the board members and you would think they could vote out then the president. So then the, the next case would be, well, how many, you know, what if the dissidents, for example, picked up, picked up the, the 37 un, unknown. They, were, they got out there and picked up those, those votes. Now, from here, of course, you can run scenarios until, you know, you go crazy, right? Because you could say, well, what if I picked up this many of the dissidents or the unknown? Or what if it went this way or that way? Or what if they voted for my person or the other person or for some other person, random person? It depends on how many people were elected and whatnot in terms of how big the scenarios would be. You could even run run a, um, a statistical type of scenario to, to run the possibilities of different different outcomes that could happen from here. But... 
So what is, you know, but let's just assume just one more thing here that will, that they're going to pick up the 37 from the dissidents and just see where they would, they would be there. So let's go from the dissident side of things. And they're saying, yeah, we, we went to these and we picked up these other 37. And, uh, and so they're, they're with us now they're with us. So we have the proxy over their vote. So let's do this one more time, assuming that's the case. So we'll, we'll say that uh, this one is the unknown. I'm going to do this fairly quick again. I'm going to make this one yellow. And we're going to say the outstanding shares. Outstanding shares we said were the total down here, 147,000. Underline that font group and underline. Then we'll multiply this out. This is going to be equal to 5 times the 147 for the numerator. Then the total number of directors is going to be 13 plus one, underlining that font group, underline, equals the S-U-M, the sum. That's not the sum. My fingers are on the wrong key. Sum. It's amazing that even I just randomly pick numbers and it's still a formula. There's so many formulas in Excel. Just randomly put equals into three letters and you get a formula almost. any case, we're going to then say, let's underline that font group and underline and this is going to then be equal to the numerator divided by the denominator. We'll add one to that font group underline. This is the sum of these two. And there we have it. Now I'm going to use the goal seek. We need to be at these two adding up to 82,000. So we're going to ask Excel, please change this number to 82,000 by changing this number to whatever it needs to be to get there using goal seek so 82,000 that's the goal data group forecast goal seek we want to set this cell to be 82,000 by changing this cell okay so we're going to say okay and now home tab couple decimals we're we're at 7 so if they clear if they did that then they would lock down 7 we usually drop the decimal and that would be enough if they got seven you know they'd be basically controlling the board and if they got those seven people to vote off the current uh the current uh, management then they may have the ability they should have the ability to do so you would think in that point let's just prove it out one more time we'll do the rest of the calculations second way we can calculate this i'll do it a little bit faster here we're going to say that we have the shares owned plus one so the shares owned is going to be this plus this now plus one because we got those two added together and that's going to be actually it's minus one sorry about that minus one not plus one minus one so we got the 81999 and then we got the directors to be elected plus one so we got the 13 plus one for the 14 underlining that font group and underline then we're going to go and say that's going to be the numerator, which will be the 81999 times the 14. And then the denominator are the shares outstanding, which is the 147,000 underlining that font group and underline. So we're going to then pick up this equaling the numerator divided by the shares outstanding or denominator, adding some decimals, number group, couple decimals. So there's that 7.81 once again, the second way we can calculate it. Okay, let's run our scenario just to prove that we can pick up those seven here or think it through in our mind. We're going to be picking up the shares outstanding. My right click keeps doing funny things right there. So shares outstanding. We're going to say total is the 147 times the 13. I'm going to underline these three cells even though there's nothing in it. Font group and underline. And then multiply that out. So the total number of votes, once again, at the 1,199,000. Now us as the dissidents think that we're going to pick up R45 plus we've got proxy over or we've convinced these, these folks to, to vote for our candidates. So we've got them times 13. So now we have then the 1,066,000 1, votes versus the incumbent which now only has 147 minus the 82,000 or 65,000 shares times 13. Multiplying that out, that gives them vote count of only 845,000. So if we then run our kind of vote scenario over here, we'll do our vote scenario type of thing. We've got our numbers from one to 
to uh, 13. That's how many people we're electing on the board. We've got our candidates here, which we're doing the same A to O candidates. That's what the, that's what their names are, A to O. And then we're gonna say we want we we think we can pick up our candidates. We're just gonna be the top, the top uh, seven seven this time. Those are our people that we have nominated and would like to be elected as the board members. So now we're gonna take then our total shares and divide them evenly over them, divided by seven. So I'm just gonna copy that across, divided by seven, there we have it, totaling that up. If we total it up down here, total equals the SUM of these items. We've spent all of our shares. Now we just let these, these guys go. What could the other people do? The, the incumbents could try to, to block us. They're not gonna vote for our people. They're gonna try to beat us if they know what we're doing. They're gonna say 152287 possibly and try to beat us out on as many people that they can just barely. And then they would need one more to beat us. So they would need the 185,000 shares they have minus the sum of the shares they've used. And they don't have enough to get there. Now this is a negative number. So you might say maybe we can pick up one more if that's a negative, but I don't believe the spread would would allow us to do that, right? If we tried to if we tried to go to one more, meaning we tried to pick up that eight, that number eight here, because we're close to eight, why can't we just do eight, right? We could say, then that would be equal to the 1066,000 divided by eight. And then we would try to, we would try to copy that down to the, to the eighth one here, which would be the next one down. And these would be our green items in that case. And then if we looked at the other the other guys, then now they would say, okay, now we're gonna say one, three, three, two, five, one, and copy that down to to here. And then they gotta beat out that last one. So the 180 the 845 minus the sum of these would mean they're at the 178. See, so they could still beat out this last one. So we can't really pick up the eighth one. It looks like it because that was a negative number, but still doesn't work. So let's go back to the original scenario. We'll say, all right, I don't think that's gonna work then. Whatever, it was a good try. Might as well look at it. So let's go back to the original then, which is simply gonna be the seven allocating our votes of the 1,066,000 over seven. So there we have it. The other guy then is going to say one five two two eight uh, two eight seven, and they'll copy that on down. Copy that on down to here, and then once again they'll try to beat us out on this one, but they won't be able to. And, and actually they they'll have negative votes down here. So what will actually happen is if they tried to do that, they would have to stop here, which would be equal to. The 185,000 minus the sum of these, and they and that's where they'd have to stop, and they'd still pick up, you know, these these items because we left them there, and there they would have they wouldn't have enough to pick up another one to take us out. So then, if we had the totals, if we sum this up, the totals SUM, and I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it. We're gonna paste just the formulas so that we don't we don't uh, take the green on down there. It won't let me right click here for some reason. So there it goes, function. So I'm just gonna paste the function. So then it's just sum it up across. I'll total it up down below. So I'm just gonna copy this one across with the auto fill, copying that across. So there's our totals lining up. So that looks correct. And then I'm just gonna copy these guys. I'm gonna copy these so that we can sort them into our table to the right. So I'm going to select, I'm holding down control to pick the non-adjacent cells, control C. I'm going to put them here and right click and paste them one, two, three, and then select our first five, make them green again, font groom and green, sort them from Z to A. And of course we have our, our people then in, in the top 13. We're still up in the top 13. They still picked up this last one. So there's that one's still going to be on the board. And we're beating that one, but it doesn't really matter because as long as we're in the top 13, you know, whoever's in the top 13, that's what counts. So in this scenario, then of course, they would be picking up 
it looks like the seven the seven shares out of the, the seven seats out of the 13 and, and if those seven seats are willing to vote for change vote for the president to be out then you would think that the president could be out in that type of scenario once again you can think about many different scenarios in between if you're trying to guess what this faction is going to do or what the other what the other side uh, is going to do you can run multiple different scenarios based on that